Hi everyone, quick summary of what we did in class. So first we wrote a quick method that would try and count the number of syllables in a string. I've called mine syllables for, and just to test to see if it works in a very informal way, I have several words in an array and I loop over those words, have my method predict how many syllables, and then I display them so that I can just see as a normal human, is it working? What we really want to do though, is test it more systematically on a large number of words and ideally measure its error, say what percentage of the words are we getting right and what are we getting wrong. So to do that, we need a whole bunch of words along with the correct number of syllables for each word. So that way we can use our method and predict the number of syllables and then check to see if our method got it right. So that's what we're doing. I gave you a file called syllables.txt where each line has a word followed by an equals sign, uh -oh, followed by um, that same word split into syllables separated by asterisks. So our goal is we want to be able to read this file and turn every single line into a word object that contains a string for the word and a number for how many syllables. So first we need to know how to read text files. So uh, we're going to do this in two steps. First I showed you this read file as string method and we talked about what all the different parts are. Um, so in particular we talked about what is the try catch block about. If a particular type of runtime error happens inside the try block here, such as for example it can't find the file name, ordinarily the program would crash and there would be a bunch of red error message down here that tells you what kind of exception happened. The code uh, inside the try block if it triggers an exception, if it has the error, we can catch it, which means that all of the information associated with that error gets bundled up into an object. Um, in this case, it's a file not found exception object, that's the data type, and E is the variable name for the object. And then instead of crashing, it will jump to this line and run that line of code and then keep going. Um, the reason that we're using it here is because we actually have to have it here in order to use the scanner and file reader. But none of that is really to do with the actual reading of the file, so let's talk about that part. Um, the way we use something like read file as string is shown up here. Uh, you don't have to have it be in the same class, you could have it be in another class, but I'm running read file as string, and then you give it a string that's the path to the file that you're trying to read. In my case, I don't want to read words.txt. I put syllables.txt here inside my data folder. So I'm going to start in the data folder and then load syllables.txt. And then here I'm just displaying the first 100 characters to make sure it worked. Okay, so this string gets assigned to the string file name, the parameter file name. And then down here you see I'm building a special object called a file reader using that file name. Then I take the file reader object and I give it as input to the scanner constructor to build a scanner object. The scanner is the thing that's actually going to read the file. What the scanner does is it keeps track of where in the file, um, where, it, where it is in the file. So at the very beginning, when you first create it, it hasn't read any of the file yet, so it's at the top. When you say scanner.nextline, that will return the next line of text in the file all the way until the next line break. Um, so we save that into line. Then scanner.hasNextLine looks to see where we are in the file right now and it says is there another line or are we at the end of the file. So basically we're saying as long as there's another line to read in the file, let's go ahead and read it and then scanner remembers that it's already returned that line and so it moves its own bookmark in the file down one line and we save that into line. Trim is a method that removes all the spaces and tabs and carriage returns from the beginning or the end of the line. So it trims the white space, what's called the, the leading and the trailing white space. Um, and the only reason I'm doing that is because if there was, if there were like extra spaces at the end of a line, I don't want to include those in my, in my output. So I have this string that started out empty, and one at a time I read the lines from the file and add them to the end of this mega string, and then at the end of the method I return the mega string. So if you were going to run this, it would work, but it would run very, very slowly. And the reason why is because we talked about string being an immutable object. So when you add on to the end of the string, 
it doesn't just take your string object and add a couple of characters at the end. Instead, it makes a completely new string object whose length is long enough to include what you're trying to add, and then it has to copy character by character the old values from the string and then the new values you're trying to add on. And all of that takes a lot of time. So let me show you a faster approach to do the same thing. This code is exactly like the last code, except I've named this two. Um, and there's three lines that are different. This line, this line, and that line. So in the prior code, we had uh, an output string that we initialized to be empty, and we were building up one line at a time. Here, we have a special object called a string builder, which was designed for this exact purpose. It will let you add on new strings to the end of an existing one that you're building step by step to return at the end. So here we run output, which is the name of the string builder, dot append, and then the string that we want to put at the end of our ongoing string. Um, and then at the end, we tell the output to return a string object. So uh, when I ran this one, it took like 30 seconds to read the file and to create all these strings and output. This one runs in less than a second. In fact, let's watch it go. Um, so here I'm going to call this 2, and I'm going to run it. And there you go, really, really fast. Um, and you'll notice that this looks like the file that we were looking at a second ago. Let's, let's look at the top of it. So here, aardvark, abater, abacai, which I guess is plural for abacus. So you see all of those same things, only it's sort of one giant long string, because I, I read one line at a time, and then I just appended each one to the end of the prior one. All right, so that might not seem very helpful, um, and that's not actually what we want to do. What we really want to do is read the file one line at a time, but then process that line to extract the information we care about. Because we really just want to know what's the word and how many syllables. And we'll bundle that object up, uh, sorry, we'll bundle that information up into our own object, and then we'll return a whole bunch of those objects. So here's what I mean. Here I've made another copy of that same file, uh, sorry, the same method, but this time I've called it read syllables file, and I want to return an array list of word objects. And we're going to make our own class called word, and the word class is going to contain the two pieces of information we care about, which is what's the word and how many syllables does it have. So the rest of this code is the same. I'm still making a scanner, and I'm looping through each line of the file, and here I read each line of the file. But the difference is now I want to take that line and process it. So I want to figure out what's the word and how many syllables. So let's do that. I'm just going to make methods. So get word from line, line. Syllables, get syllables from line, line. Um, so you can imagine that you've written methods that will look at a single line of this file, look at that string and do whatever it needs doing to get these pieces of information. And then once I have them, I'll run a constructor for a word object to create the word and add it to my word list, and then at the end we'll return the word list. Okay, so I've gone ahead and filled in the rest of the methods, and so now I want to test it. So I have my read syllables file, and I'm giving it the path to my syllables file, um, and it returns this array list of words, and now I'm looping over each word, and I'm getting out the word and the number of syllables so that I can see them. And here we go. And there you see a bunch of words. All right, but the whole point of this is we wanted to measure the error for our own approach to counting syllables. So I'm going to run this from my other class. So let's copy this much. And where did I write it? Readability. Here we are. So up here at the top of readability, I'll paste that code. And now it's saying it doesn't know about the read syllables file method because that was in this other class that I'd written. Um, so you could either copy the method from your other class into this one, or because I made it a static method, you can run it straight from that other class, because that's what it means to be static. It means you don't need an instance of this object. Instead, you can it's a class method. You can run it straight from the class name. All right, so far so good. So what I really want to do is now combine these things together. I get all these words, and I'm looping over them. Um, but instead of displaying them, I want to do this. I want to get, whoops, I want to get the word out. W.getWord. And now I want to have my method predict. So what's my method called? It's called syllables for word. So my method will predict. 
And then I can have a counter for how many right and how many wrong. In fact, I'll just have a counter for how many right. So I'll say if prediction is the same as w.getSyllables, then let's add to the counter. And then at the end, I can display uh, what my overall error is. So you got, and then what's it gonna be here? I'm gonna make this a double to avoid integer division. So number right divided by how many, and how many is words.size, because that's how many things I looped over, and that's the probability. Sorry, not probability, that's the, uh, <clears throat> the percentage. So you got this many right. Um, and I'm very curious to see how this actually comes out, because I haven't done this yet. So let's see. Cool. So we got 72% of them right, which is, you know, not wonderful, but it's not too bad for a method that took us 30 minutes to write. All right, so our goal now is to try and improve it. So a nice thing to do would be if we got it wrong, let's save the words that we got wrong so that way we can display them afterwards and notice what about those words is causing our method to fail. So then we can maybe adjust our method to improve it. Good luck.